This is live television, everybody. <laughs> oh, my mask. <laughs> Later. when the first lockdown happened in Vienna in Austria and um, we decided to carry on reading. Exactly, and we've got four more years to go. <laughs> <laughs> because it's quite a long book, there are 1,001 nights and we have already read. Thank you so much for the hearts and likes everybody. We have all, oh, my sister's online. Oh, hi, hi Sarah. Hi Sarah. <laughs> Um, we have already read 1,000, over 1,000 pages. I looked at it the other day. Oh really, we did? Yes, we did. Okay. So that's quite a lot of pages to have read already. Yes. And by the way, the music that you could hear in the background beforehand that is now playing on a little tape. Um, earlier, now it's in the background. Right? Um, yes, but earlier it was on live and now it's in the background. Um, is the beautiful music of Kami Absolutely. Yes, who's our director of music. And he was accompanied by Bijan. By Bishan, exactly, and you will listen to a little bit more of them towards the end. Yes, because what they're doing, they're composing an entire album dedicated to this lovely project. Also, we would like to thank, first of all, the Hans Kempinski for hosting us one more time, Mr. Kamiyam Sadiri, obviously, and Bijan for the work, and our close to our line, beautiful our dresses, our beautiful dresses, are provided by Maurizio Gambria. Yam, I can't say his name now. I'm having a yes, you can. <laughs> Yamba, <laughs> long day. <laughs> we got a really long day. Maurizio Yamba, and he has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shop um, for ladies' fashion on Langagasa. I believe it's 39, but I'm not sure. But we'll give you the details afterwards. Um, you can look at the show afterwards. Yes. And why does that keep going back? Does anybody know? No, it's fine. It's Are you sure? Like, yes. Okay. So without further ado, we're going, going for a start. Ado. I'm going to start reading. Right. We are. That's really worrying me. I'm just going to keep... Every time I do this, lady, you're going to get a little bit of my teeth. No, it's fine. It's still really? Right. Hi, Instagram. We're still with you. We're still with you. We think. <laughs> oh, wait, I should turn this one. All right. Okay, ready. So, enjoy the reading. And what is special about this evening? Why are we here this evening, specifically? What do you mean? To read? Yeah, no, I know, but why specifically tonight, here tonight? What is the special thing about this book tonight? Oh, we oh. finished! <laughs> <laughs> we finished and we the third and volume. Of drink. <laughs> we did. We finished the third volume, everybody, and we are now out of 17. Out of, oh, is it 17? I oh. think 16 or 17, yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's going to be a long few yes, years. Yes, a long journey, so <laughs> join us, please. All right. <laughs> Enjoy the reading, everyone. <clears throat> this is the story of Niyama bin Al-Rabia and Naomi, his slave girl. There lived once in the city of Kufa, a man called Al-Rabia bin Hatim, who was one of the chief men of the town, a wealthy and healthy, and heaven had vouched, vouchsafed him a son whom he named Niyamat Alat Kay. Can you check that, please? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. A little, little tech, tech problem. problem. Like, we'll start like tech problem again. on Instagram. No, um, on Instagram. On the Instagram. Sorry, maybe you'll we'll start again. That's I will I start again. Let's yeah. fix this, because if you get up over two seconds, you're not going to be I don't good. know why it keeps flickering off, though. Zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> she was about to give her code online, everyone. Listen. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes. connection. Okay, all right. Again. We will start again. Excuse us, please. And we will not we will not stop anymore. All right. No, if you want to go and watch it, those of you who are on Instagram, if you want to go and watch it on Facebook, we won't have this problem. Thank Just you. Just to let all you right. know. Okay, go for it. 
The story of Mia Marvin, Al Rabia, and Naomi, his slave girl. There lived once in the city of Kufa a man called Al Rabia bin Hatim, who was one of the chief men of the town, a wealthy and a healthy. And heaven had vouchsafed him a son whom he named Niamat Allah. One day, being in the slave broker's mart, he saw a woman exposed for sale with a little maid of wonderful beauty and grace on her arm. So he beckoned to the broker and asked him, How much for this woman and her daughter? He answered, Fifty dinars. Quoth Al Rabia, Write the contract of sale and take the money and give it to her owner. Then he gave the broker the price and his brokerage, and taking the woman and her child, carried them to his house. Now when the daughter of his uncle, who was his wife, saw the slave, she said to her husband, O oh my cousin, what is this damsel? He replied, Of a truth, I bought her for the sake of the little one on her arm. For know that when she groweth up, there will not be her like for beauty either in the land of the Arabs or the Amjans. His wife remarked, Right was thy read, and said to the woman, What is thy name? She replied, O oh, my lady, my name is Taufi. And what is thy daughter's name? asked she. Answered the slave, Sa'ad, the happy. Rejoined her mistress, Thou sayest too, Thou art indeed happy. And happy is he who hath bought thee. Then quoth she to her husband, O oh my cousin, what wilt thou call her? And quoth he, What soul thou choosest. So she, Then let us call her Naomi. And he rejoined, Good is thy device. The little Naomi was reared with Arabia son Niamat in one cradle, so to speak till the twain reached the age of ten, and each grew handsomer than the other. And the boy used to address her, O oh, my sister, and she, O oh, my brother. Till so they came to that age when Al-Rabia said to Niyama, O oh, my son, Naomi is not thy sister, but thy slave. I bought her in thy name, whilst thou wast yet in the cradle. So call her no more sister from this day forth. Quoth Niamh, if that be so, I will take her to wife. Then he went to his mother and told her of this, and she said to him, O oh my son, she is thy handmaid. So he wedded and went in unto Naomi and loved her. And two years passed over them, whilst in this condition, nor was there in all Kufa a fairer girl than Naomi, or a sweeter, or a more graceful. As she grew up, she learned the Quran and read works of science and excelled in music and playing upon all kinds of instruments. And in the beauty of her singing, she surpassed all the folk of her time. Now one day, as she sat with her husband in the wine chamber, she took the lute, tightened the strings, and sang these two couplets. While thou, my Lord, whose bounty is my estate, the sword whereby my woes to Nihil. Recourse I never need to Amru or Zay, nor aught save thee if way to me grow stray. Niamh was charmed with his verses and said to her, By my life, O Naomi, sing to us with a tambourine and other instruments. So she sang these couplets to a lively measure. By his life who holds my guiding rein, I swear, I'll meet unloved ground, forest, foe, nor care. Good sooth, I'll vex revilers, thee obey, and quit my slumbers and all joy forswear. And for thy love, I'll dig in vitals mine, a grave, nor shall my vitals weep this there. Niamh exclaimed, Heaven favoured art thou, O Naomi. But whilst they led thus the most joyous life, behold, Al-Hajjaj, the viceroy of Kufa, said to himself, 
means must I contrive to take this girl named Naomi and send her to the commander of the faithful, Abd al-Malik bin Marwan, for he hath not in his palace her like for beauty and sweet singing. So he summoned an old woman of the dwellers of his wives and said to her, Go to the house of Al-Rabia and foregather with the girl Naomi and combine means to carry her off for her like is not to be found on the face of this earth. She promised to do his bidding. So next morning, she dumped the wool and clothes of a devotee and hung around her neck a rosary of beads by the thousand. And, handing in hand, a staff and a leather water bottle of Yamani manufacture. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted. Now, when it was the 238th night, she said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the old woman promised to do the bidding of Al Hajjaj. And when as it was morning, she donned the woolen clothes of a devotee and hung around her neck a rosary of beads by the thousands, and hent in hand a staff and a leather water bottle of Yamani manufacturer, and fared forth, crying, Glory be to Allah, praise be Allah, there is no God but thee, God, Allah is most great, there is no majesty, and there is no might save in Allah, the glorious, the great. Nor did she leave off her lords and her groaning in prayer, whilst her heart was full of guile and wiles, till she came to the house of Nehemiah bin Arabaya at the hour of noon prayer and knocked at the door. The doorkeeper opened and said to her, What dost thou want? Quoth she, I am a poor, pious woman whom the time of noon prayer hath overtaken, and leave would I pray in this blessed place. Answered the porter, O oh, old woman, this is no mosque, nor oratory, but the house of Nehemiah, son of Arabia. She replied, I know. There is neither cathedral mosque, nor oratory like the house of Nehemiah bin Arabia. I am a chamberwoman of the palace of the prince of true believers, and am come out for worship and the visitation of holy places. But the porter rejoined, Thou canst not enter, and many words passed between them, till at last she caught hold and hung to him, saying, Shall the like of me be denied admission to the house of Nehemiah bin Arabia, I who, who have free access to the houses of emirs and grandees? Anon, out came Nehemiah, and... Hearing their loud language, laughed, and bade the old woman enter after him. So she followed him into the presence of Naomi, whom she saluted after the godliest and goodliest fashion. And when she looked on her, she was confounded at her exceeding seemly head, and said to her, O oh my lady, I commend thee to the safeguard of Allah, who made thee and thy lord fellows in beauty and loveliness. Then she stood up in the prayer niche and betook herself to inclination and prostration and prayer till day departed and night darkened and starkened. When Naomi said to her, O oh my mother, rest thy legs and feet a while, replied the old woman, O oh, my lady, whoso seeketh the world to come, let him weary in this world, and whoso wearieth not himself in this world, shall not attain the dwellings of the just in the world to come. Then Naomi brought her food and said to her, Eat of my bread, and pray heaven to accept my penitence and to have mercy on me. But she cried, O oh, my lady, I am fasting. As for thee, thou art but a girl, and it besitteth thee to eat and drink and make merry. 
Allah be indulgent to thee. For the Almighty saith, all shall be punished, except him who shall repent and believe and shall work a righteous work. So Naomi continued sitting with the old woman in talk and presently said to Nehemiah, O oh my Lord, conjure this ancient dame to sojourn with us a while, for piety and devotion are imprinted on her countenance. Quoth he, set apart for a chamber where she may say her prayers and suffer no one to go into her. Peradventure, Allah, extolled and exalted be he, shall prosper us by the blessing of her presence and never separate us. So the old woman passed her night in praying and reciting the Quran. And when Allah caused the morn to dawn, she went in to Nehemiah and Naomi and, giving them good morning, said to them, I pray Allah have you in his holy keeping. Quoth Naomi, Whither away, O my mother? My Lord hath bidden me set apart for thee a chamber where thou mayest seclude thee for thy devotions. Replied the old woman, Allah give him a long life and continue his favour to you both. But I would have you charge the doorkeeper not to stay my coming into you. And inshallah, I will go to the round of the holy places and pray for you two at the end of my devotions every day and night. Then she went out, whilst Naomi wept for parting with her, knowing not the cause of her coming, and returned to al judge, who said to her, And thou do my bidding soon, thou shalt have of me abundant good. Quoth she, I ask of thee a full month, and quoth he, Take the month. Thereupon the old hag fell to daily visiting Nehemiah's house and frequented his slave wife Naomi. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. <clears throat> Now when it was the 239th night, she said, It hath reached me, auspicious king, that the old hag fell to visiting daily Niyama's house and frequenting his slave wife Naomi, and both ceased not to honour her, and she used to go into them morning and evening, and all in the house respected her, till one day, being alone with Naomi, she said to her, O oh, my lady, by Allah, when I go to the holy places, I will pray for thee. And I only wish thou wert with me, that thou mightest look on the elders of the faith who resort thither, and they should pray for thee according to thy desire. Naomi cried, I conjure thee by Allah, take me with thee. And she replied, Ask leave of thy mother-in-law, and I will take thee. So Naomi said to her husband's mother, O oh, my lady, ask my master to let us go forward, me and thee, one day with this my old mother, to pray and worship with the fakirs in the holy places. Now when Nehemiah came in and sat down, the old woman went up to him and would have kissed his hand, but he forbade her. So she invoked blessings on him, and left the house. Next day she came again in the absence of Nyama, and she addressed Naomi saying, We prayed for thee yesterday, but arise now and divert thyself, and return ere thy Lord come home. So Naomi said to her mother-in-law, I beseech thee for Allah's sake, give me leave to go with this pious woman that I may sight the saints of Allah in the holy places and return speedily ere my Lord come back. Quoth Nehemiah's mother, I fear lest thy Lord know. But said the old woman, by Allah, I will not let her take seat on the floor. No, she shall look, standing on her feet, and not tarry. So she took the damsel by guide and carrying her to Al-Hajjah's palace, 
told him of her coming. After placing her in a lonely chamber, whereupon he went in to her, and looking upon her, saw her to be the loveliest of the people of the day. Never had he beheld her like. Now when Naomi caught sight of him, she veiled her face from him, but he left her not till he had called his chamberlain, whom he commanded to take fifty horsemen. And he bade him mount the damsel on a swift dromedary and bear to her to Damascus, and there deliver her to the commander of the faithful, Abd al-Malik bin Marwan. Moreover, he gave him a letter for the caliph, saying, Bear him this letter, and bring me his answer, and hasten thy return to me. So the chamberlain, without losing time, took the damsel, and she tearful for separation from her lord, and setting out with her on the dromedary, gave not over journey till he reached Damascus. There he sought audience of the commander of the faithful, and when it was granted, the chamberlain delivered the damsel and reported the circumstance. The caliph appointed her a separate apartment and going into his harem said to his wife, al Hajjaj hath bought me a slave girl of the daughters of the kings of Kufa for 10,000 dinars and hath sent me this letter. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permission. Now, when it was the two hundred and fortieth night, she said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that when the caliph acquainted his wife with the story of the slave girl, she said to him, Allah increase to thee his favour. Then the caliph's sister went in to the supposed slave girl, and when she saw her, she said, By Allah, not unlucky is the man who hath thee in his house, were thy cost an hundred thousand dinars. And Naomi replied, O fair of face, what king's palace is this, and what is the city? She answered, This is the city of Damascus, and this is the palace of my brother, the commander of the faithful, Ab al Malik bin Marwan. Then she resumed, Didst thou not know all this? Naomi said, By Allah, O my lady, I had no knowledge of it. When the other asked, And he who sold thee and took thy price, did he not tell thee that the caliph had bought thee? Now, when Naomi heard these words, she shed tears, and she said to herself, Verily, I have been tricked, and the trick hath succeeded, adding to herself, if, if I speak, none will credit me, so I will hold my peace and take patience, for I know that the relief of Allah is near. Then she bent her head for shame, and indeed her cheeks were tanned by the journey in the sun. So, the caliph's sister left her that day and returned to her on the morrow with clothes and necklaces of jewels and dressed her. After which, the caliph came into her and sat down by her side. And his sister said to him, Look on this handmaid in whom Allah hath conjoined every perfection of beauty and loveliness. So he said to Naomi, Draw back the veil from thy face. But she would not unveil, and he beheld not her face. However, he saw her wrists, and love of her entered his heart. And he said to his sister, I will not go in unto her for three days, till she be cheered by thy converse. Then he arose and left her. But Naomi ceased not to brood over her case and sigh for her separation from her master, Niamar, till she fell sick of a fever during the night and ate not nor drank and her favour faded and her charms were changed. 
They told the Caliph of this, and her condition grieved him. So he visited her with physicians and men of skill, but none could come at a cure for her. This, how it fared with her. But as regards Nehemiah, when he returned home, he sat down on his bed and cried, Ho, Naomi! But she answered not. So he rose in haste and called out, yet none came to him, as all the women in the house had hidden themselves for fear of him. Then he went out to his mother, whom he found sitting with her cheek on her hand, and said to her, O oh, my mother, where is Naomi? She answered, O oh, my son, she is with one who is worthier than I to be trusted with her, namely the devout old woman. She went forth with her to visit devotionally the fakirs in return. Quoth Nehemiah, since when have this been her habit, and at what hour went she forth? Quoth his mother, she went out early this morning. He asked, and how camest thou to give her leave for this? And she answered, oh my son, twas she persuaded me. There is no majesty, and there is no might save in Allah, the glorious, the great, exclaimed Myanmar, and going forth from his home in a state of distraction, he repaired to the captain of the watch, to whom said he, Dost thou play tricks upon me, and steal my slave girl away from my house? I will assuredly complain of thee, the commander of the faithful. And said the chief of the police, Who hath taken her? And Myanmar replied, An old woman of such and such a mean, clad in woollen raiment, and carrying a rosary of beads numbered by thousands, rejoined the other, Find me the old woman, and I will get back thee thy slave girl. And who knows the old woman, retorted Nehemiah, and who knows the hidden things save Allah, may he be exalted and exalted, cried the chief, who knew her for al Hajjaz, procurus, cried Nehemiah, I look to thee for my slave girl, and al Hajjaj shall judge between thee and me. And the master of police answered, Go to whom thou wilt. So Nehemiah went to the palace of al Hajjaj, for his father was the one of the chief men of the Kufa. And when he arrived there, the chamberlain went in to the governor and told him the case. Whereupon al Hajjaj said, Hither with him. And when he stood before him, inquired, What be thy business? Said Nehemiah, Such and such and such things have befallen me. And the governor said, Bring me the chief of police, and we will command him to seek for the old woman. Now, he knew that the chief of police was acquainted with her. So, when he came in, he said to him, I wish thee to make search for the slave girl of Nehemiah, son of al Rabia. And he answered, None knoweth the things, the hidden things, save Almighty Allah. Rejoined al Hajjaj, There is no help for it, but thou send out horsemen and look for the damsel in all the roads, and seek her in the towns. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. say. Thank you. That was a lovely story this evening, wasn't it? That was it? a very lovely story. Yes. That's the real hope it's yes. going to have a happy ending. If you would like to know how the story ends, tune in on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Again, and we'll continue reading. Oh, and now my phone has turned itself on again. Who Sorry. knows? The things only allow the exalted oh, really? knows why that's happening. We would like right? to thank one more time, right? Yes, we would. Because I just remembered something. Yes. Hansen Kempinski for hosting us tonight. Yes, absolutely. Maurizio for the beautiful, beautiful dresses we are wearing this evening. You can find the links to both the Hansen Kempinski and Maurizio's shop. The accessories were provided by Mrs. Lovely, lovely, wonderful Loretta Carter. Very, very lovely. And the music. And the music is being provided by Kamyab Sadevi 
and accompanied by Bijan. Yes. So we're going to leave you. We are going to leave you. And Kamiyam and Bijan are going to entertain you with some more of the wonderful and, music. And please do free, free, feel free. I can't say it now. It's We've very had a long day. Long day. Had a long day. Feel free to share this with all of your friends and family and pets and enemies too. And if you'd like to support us, if you'd like to support us, www.paypal.me slash Vienna Theatre Project. So, Thank you my, name is, oh, my name is Joanna Goldman Seidel and it's a good night for me. What do you do when you say good night? I say many, many blessings and see you next week. My name is Saman Gerard and I say, remember to go inwards instead of outwards. <laughs> Have a good night everyone. Good night everybody and stay online for the last couple of songs by Kamyab, accompanied by Bijan. It was an absolute pleasure for reading for you. Thank good you night. very much. Have a good, good night, night everyone. Bye bye. Oh, and this will be on YouTube as well afterwards. Okay, bye. Okay, Have a good night. <laughs>